everybody, it's Lace, and uh, guess what? We get to do another crafting video on masterworking and enchanting. Disregard all the other videos. I'm going to go back and put a big old caveat. Don't even bother looking at them because things have changed. And they've changed for the better now. Um, you're going to have to put in a little more time and work, but the end result is going to be much better. And you're going to produce some much better gear and you're going to get to tailor it a little bit easier not quite as uh, random as before you can kind of go towards a certain kind of focal point like an int caster kind of thing or a strength health kind of guy or a dex focus kind of guy there's some ways to do that that seem to me and this is my personal humble opinion a little bit easier by mixing and matching your master work and enchanting. The main thing that you need to do first off is let's hit K for skills and let's go into alchemy. And uh, you're gonna see, um, we go in here, underneath enchantment, you now have two new skills. As soon as you get this to 50, you need to go train these two skills. That's gonna be at the crafting trainer at any pavilion in you know, towns that have the crafting pavilion, uh, to name a few, Exeter, Househead, Resolute, all these I know have crafting pavilions and therefore they have uh, crafting trainers in that public NPC town. To try to keep this all encompassing and kind of take back some of the earlier videos, you know, I did a couple on masterwork and enchanting, um, let's just revisit uh, talking about skill training. Um, Right now, you know that obviously once you get this to 40, you've got to get this to 40, then you can train this, okay? You need to have this at 50 before you can train these things. Going into the blacksmithing and stuff like that, obviously, uh, to get into here, you need to have this at 40. To get to this one, this is the big one, the masterwork. Um, once you, to get these, you need to have this at 50. So that kind of gives you your progress get this to um, 40 then you can train these three things uh, repair and salvage obviously don't branch down there that's just something I've done on the side for other reasons um, but this is the big one get this to 40 then you can get to here get this one to 50 and then you can get these three same thing holds true in the carpentry and the tailoring um, I just want to point that out um, since I am trying to make this, like I said, all encompassing. And again, to train these skills every time, it's going to be, just like I said, a, a crafting trainer at one of the crafting pavilions in uh, some of the cities, our doors, etc., etc., et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Staying focused on this window and talking about what's going on here, what I've done so far is, and uh, what I've derived from messing around with this is, you're going to need a bajillion gold. You needed a bajillion silver to work some of the other stuff. And we'll go into that when we look a little bit deeper into master working again. Um, but uh, basically what we're finding happening so far, and this is confirmed by several people that, you know, I talk to and stuff is that um, our crafting pool, like mine's like over 4 million right now, uh, not over 9,000, but over 4 million it's um it's not really going down as I've been leveling these two things up but you can see that they're both under level 70 on on my particular crafter right now uh, remember when you're leveling any skill 0 to 70 doesn't take that much from your pool it's when you get into 90 to 100 that you're really sucking it in and uh, if you've ever looked at any of the spreadsheets that are available on the forums it's usually 1.2 million or it's four times that in some skills um, what we're finding here is it may only be the 1.2 million but what's happening is not as much as getting sucked in to the level advancement which that means more combines which means way more gold that's what I'm seeing right now is that intended I don't know but that's what's going on right now is that not much XP is going in per combine that I do. Uh, the other thing to note on this is you can see I have uh, this one to 52. This is uh, my armor because I tend to make more armor than weapons. Um, but I am trying to get that weapon up instead of doing the GM in this. The reason that I've done this is 
at about 32, and this is true for both of them. And uh, you can thank Sarah uh, Dragon from the forums for saying this, but I can confirm it uh, based on my own um, observations. At about 32, that's when you start getting a little bit better um, enchantments. Uh, so 32 is your goal. Uh, probably I could stop this at 32 and bump this up and then bump this. This might be around, yeah, I don't know, 40 something. And this would be 32. But, you know, that probably would be, I don't know, the optimal way to do it. Uh, I do more armor than the other. I just kind of, as a, as a hindsight, went back because I had a bunch of weapons that I hadn't put up on a vendor, hadn't done anything with. So I said, well, let me just start working on this one too. Um, and the reason for that is when I go to my blacksmithing, you're going to see I've already done plate and chain, which is my armor. And if you look at my tailoring, I've already done cloth and leather to GM, okay? Uh, so I've already done all my armor, so that's why that one's important to me. Um, when I look at carpentry, you're going to see I've not really done much. Those are all weapons. Um, so really for me, my my mastery or the things that I do best right now is obviously going to be chain plate and then uh, my uh, leather and cloth um, sub skills. So that's why I kind of put more emphasis on this and now kind of as hindsight, I'm just getting this up so that when I go back to start working these, I mean, I've got my shields 82. A shield does count as a weapon, by the way, when you do enchantment. So that's kind of also why I kind of went back to this and started working that skill. So when I go back to this on the silver, you know, we're going gold and silver here, back to silver. When I do some more silver and bump this some more, then I can also bump this one some more. So that's kind of my thought process and what I'm doing. Uh, what you want to do and what you want to concentrate is certainly going to vary, but I'm just kind of trying to give you an oversight of what I'm doing. It's not necessarily the best way. It's not the right way. It's just the way I'm doing it. But it should make some sense to you, I hope. The next major thing to talk about is durability. And when you create, let's say, some boots or gloves, which a lot of people will do to skill up on because it uses the least amount of materials, if you don't happen to uh, crit that item, meaning getting the extra durability when you in the process of making it, uh, they're going to end up with 50 durability. Um, they put a hard halt at 40 where you can't enchant and you can't masterwork. That means you get two tries at, you know, two tries at whatever. It's either one masterwork or one enchantment or two enchantments or two masterworks and you're done. That's a, the five and a five. If you've got it over 32 and you're doing, you know, minus 10 durability, you'll get one and that's it. And you're never going to sell that crap. It's not going to happen. However, if I hit K for skills again, if you have GM'd plate, let's say, let's say I make some plate boots and they're just plain old, you know, I don't know, copper, iron plate boots and they come out as a 50. I didn't get the exceptional. I didn't get the plus 50 durability to them because I've GM'd this in plate armor. The right thing to do is take that thing over to the station and masterwork it because I have a chance to get plus 15 durability added to it. You're not going to get that until you GM this subskill. Same thing, you know, with uh, the chain. Now, I'm going to show you where I failed hard not thinking about this, and this is what I want to sh uh, save you from. I've gotten this bin here, a bunch of crap at plus two. If I hit the control key, this is another thing that's important. I've had some people ask me, how can I see how things were made? How were the stats on them? I'm going to, I'm just mousing over it and I'm going to hit the control key while I'm on it. And you can see that you can see, in, um, enchant, I'm going from the bottom to the top. Enchantment minor, uh, minor strength, minus five. I did another enchantment, minus five durability. That's how we got to 40 from 50, okay? Uh, it's probably going to look better. On something with like plus 10 plus 11 or something you can see every process that the person went through but the other important thing is going up again you can see iron binding now if I use a copper binding I would have a different property under it um, under yards of leather too 
that's my dodge, uh, dodge modifier. If I'd use supple leather, it'd be different. If I use hardened leather, it'd be different. Um, I don't use a lot of the specialty leathers, bindings, or things like that. I feel they're not worth it. Personal humble opinion. I might throw copper binding over iron, but I don't throw a meteoric hardly ever. Um, some people do this with the bow strings and stuff. And don't get me started on the woods on bows. We'll be here all day with me bitching about that. We're not going there. But I just kind of wanted to show you that little trick about control. Because not everybody, people when they're going to a vendor, they're doing exactly what I'm doing here. They're mousing over it just like this. And all they see is that. They should be looking at this because it's going to give them a little more information. Um, there's a couple bugs like stun resistance isn't showing up quite yet in this listing. Um, it's there, and if I hit control, I'd see it, but you can't see it here. So there's a couple little quirks. To, uh, always hit control. Kind of really look hard before you buy something. That's whether it's off of a personal vendor or a public vendor. Just a public service announcement on that. So I wanted to show you something that shows the durability that was done. If we look at this helm that's uh, plus 12, we can see that, um, well, it was actually exceptional. So it had 50 durability. The helm starts out at, uh, I believe it's 80 plus 50. So it started out at like 130, right? Um, you can see that we have, um, we did one, two masterworks and three enchantments. Um, one of the masterworks that we did added another 15 durability. So that's how we were able to keep this helmet. Right now it's still at 100. This is a really long lasting helmet that's plus 12. It's pretty good. Um, you can see we got the, the, the strength, the int, we got focus, and then we also, you know, the maximum durability, and we got light skill armor focus. This is a pretty, pretty decent helmet. Um, you know, and it's, you know, ranked at plus 12. I believe when you add the uh, masterwork durability, it gives a, a plus three to it. So beware of artificially inflated numbers. Um, so this is plus 12, but it's really just a plus nine. Um, you will also see artificially inflated numbers when people socket things like a, a shield or a sword or a chest. That's going to do a plus one, but then if it procs, um, it, it'll add sometimes a plus four, plus three, or plus four. So don't rely on, just because something says it's plus 12, it doesn't mean it's the most awesome thing in the world. You might find a plus eight that's pretty close to the same thing. Um, maybe, maybe not plus eight, but plus nine or something. So just, again, hit control and look at what the things are. Don't go just by, oh my God, plus 12 for 5,000 bucks. If it's at 5,000 bucks, that, you know, I will list things that are, I don't know, what did I list that helmet at? I don't think I listed it like at 15,000 or something crazy. Let's see, let's just double click real quick. What was that helmet at? Uh, I got it at nine because it, cause it, it has 100 durability on it. Um, but this one here, I've got it 7,000 and it's plus 11. I did get the durability added, but it's only at 50. So it's not going to last near as long as that plus 12, and therefore it's selling for a lower price. These are just my personal opinions on prices. Um, absolutely no way reflects any kind of market value. A lot of people buy my stuff and resell it for thousands more. That's fine. I got rid of it and it gave me a slot to put a better armor in there. <laughs> just saying. So I just want to reiterate. Uh, the Masterwork and enchanting go hand in hand. GMing one or the other, always do the one that you've GMed first so that you have the chance to add that durability. This is especially important at items, you know, that only have 50, 50 durability to start with. Um, if you've got items that have only 50 durability, um, yeah, you're not going to get many combines off those, which means you're going to have to make more of them, which means you need more leather or cotton, or iron, or copper, or whatever to make those things. Um, same thing, weapons tend to have, I think they start at 100, it's a little bit better. Um, what I've been doing to uh, kind of grind up, I guess I shouldn't have my back to everybody. Here, here we go, look, there we go, sorry. It's kind of rude, huh? 
showing you my butt. <laughs> anyway, um, what I've been doing to grind, uh, these were just some first trials and stuff when I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this. Um, what I was doing for my armor stuff is I was making helmets because they start at 80. So I could do three enchantments because that's what I was really primarily wanting to focus on um, was the enchantment. And um, so I was doing the helmets 80 durability. I get, I'm going to get at least three out of that, even over 32, losing uh, minus 10 each time. That's going to take me to 50. And then if I want to still throw in a silver masterwork on it, I could. Um, so just, it, I think it takes uh, maybe one more bolt or one more yard of leather um, to do it. Again, I recommend doing the tailoring and the cotton because, well, we get hides pretty easy. Cotton you can grow pretty easy and it's pretty cheap if you buy it as well. Uh, but doing uh, like iron or copper, we're well, going to either be mining a lot or you're going to be paying a lot of money for that. So to me, for the armor, uh, enchantment skill ups, the way to go is leather and cotton. And especially if you've GM'd those things and you can add that durability to the 50s. Um, if you can't, well, you're kind of screwed and you're going to end up, just like I showed you, with a chest full of 50s that are down to 40 and you can't do anything with and you're never going to be able to sell them. I'm keeping them for now. Maybe something will change. Uh, maybe I'll be able to throw one more on it. Maybe they'll revisit the 40. I could have sworn it used to be 30, uh, but now it's 40. Um, so I'm kind of keeping them just in case it changes. Um, and the one thing I haven't worked on is my tailoring uh, salvage. So I'm saving them for those two to help me sell, <laughs> GM that eventually too for salvage. Um, so again, just some things to keep in mind. Let's back, bounce back to enchantment and weapons. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, going to alchemy and weapons. Okay, remember 32 is the magic number. Um, you have a lot of different ways to get weapons. You can get weapons from blacksmithing, which is going to be your blade weapons. And then you can get shields, also called weapons, when you talk about uh, um, enchantment. Um, you can go into carpentry, and all these are weapons. And you've got, you know, your bludgeon, you've got your pull arm, and you've got your range. Right now, I think the only thing that moves this skill up is making bows. Bows are extremely wood intensive, not for the faint of heart, uh, obviously, because mine's only 26. I still haven't gotten that one to 50, because I'm just like, really? This much wood? <laughs> um, the pull arms, the, the easy way to, that I found to skill that up is making spears. Spears use just the one handle, same thing as a halberd or something, but it's far less metal to make the blade. So, you know, it reduces your amount of metal needed. Uh, for the bludgeon, I, I think there's a, a war hammer and a hand axe that are each two ingots only for the blade part and then the one handle. So um, those kind of balance out and those are pretty much the easy ways to work those um when i'm doing them i make kind of one of everything you know just try to have a variety to sell but if you want to go the grind route i'm you know trying to tell you the easy the least amount of things that you have to make so like if we go to blacksmithing a lot of people do daggers for this for shields there's three different shields you can make uh there's one that takes two sheets and two of the others only take one one sheet each I tend to make all three and just keep rotating them out. Um, one of the other things I do is when I do uh, get a plus one exceptional, I throw all those in the in, in the um, in a box and I don't touch them and I only work with the crappy shit. <laughs> and that's because if it blows up, I don't care. And I save the plus ones until I've gotten higher in it to actually you know make better stuff. Um, and thinking along those lines. Remember that it's your main branch that controls your success chance, your main masterwork thing, not the subs. The subs are just what types of stats you get on things. That's true also in alchemy and enchantment. This controls your success. This controls what you get on the item. Same thing for tailoring. This controls your success. This controls what you're going to get on the item. When I say control success, at around 100 GM, and a lot of people will take some up a little bit more, 
but around 100 GM, I think it's like 95% chance on the first uh, enchantment or masterwork. The second one's like at around 83, and then the third one's like at 48, and I think the fourth one's like 14 or something horrible like that. Um, I have gotten them. Uh, they do exist. You can do it. Um, but, you know, it's a huge gamble at 14%. Um, so I just kind of want to touch on that a little bit. So, again, success chance, what you get on the item. Only if these are GM can you get durability. Before I get any detractors going, but Lace, you can take weapons you found in the field and you can, uh, you can uh, enchant and masterwork them. Remember, they've now lowered it to 40 durability, so you can't necessarily do that. You'd have to repair it, then enchant and masterwork it. And the repair kits are going to, you know, if you buy them, they're like 100 bucks. What? You can make some. Um, the carpentry ones, I can't remember what the things are. I just know that the blacksmith ones take three ingots to make a blacksmith repair kit. It is totally way better to buy it for 100 um, but a lot of people, you know, were doing that before, is uh, using crap they found in the field uh, and enchanting and masterworking those. Um, but now with the 40 minimum, I don't think you're going to be able to do that anymore um, unless you repair it first. If you've got, you know, a huge surplus of stuff and you want to make the repair kits by hand and then repair them and then do that, sure, you could do that. Um, it's just... I have this philosophy is I only enchant or masterwork something I can sell because gold and silver is precious to me because that took me time to mine or maybe I buy some because I do buy some on occasion. Um, I mostly mine it because I want to get my producer XP built up and, and mining's one way to do it. Um, so yes, you can get stuff that you found in the field, repair it, and then enchant and masterwork it. Um, that is one route to go, uh, but with now the hard... Uh, the hard cutoff point at 40, I think you're going to find people are not going to be doing that quite as much. Um, so just want to put that in there. Another thing that people like to skill up on is the necklaces because it's five uh, bindings, which is basically um, one ingot makes two bindings, so it's like quote unquote two and a half ingots, which might be slightly cheaper than some of the sheet things that I said for like, let's say, uh, different pieces of armor um, again to me it's metal and uh, metal is a little more precious I feel than uh, say uh, hides or cotton so some people do that um, again you're still gonna end up with a necklace that's 50 durability and if you haven't GM something you're gonna be in the same uh, boat with as as you would be with the legs or not the legs, with the uh, gloves and boots. So, mm, I don't know that necklaces are any better than anything else. Uh, to me, metal's precious. I like to keep it for my bindings. I like to keep it for my carpentry and stuff. So, I, I don't do necklaces. But some do. So, just putting that out there. I guess now it's time to talk about the subs again, because they have changed. Um, I've gotten most of mine done, but... The ones that I can specifically speak to is, again, 32 is the magic number. That's when you get what they're calling, I guess, folks are calling the major enchants. Those are the ones that take 10 durability per application instead of minus 5 durability per application. So 32 is the magic number. It used to be 50 is when you got different things to apply in those subs. And when I say that, I'm, you know, talking about, you know, we didn't, ha we didn't have, obviously... Of the alchemy ones we only had these and getting these to 50 was key which is why you can see here I was pushing these to 50 but not that one um, same thing here I pushed things to 50 you know but not any higher than that until I was ready to focus on them um, it's now 32 get you kind of back to where we were in R37 but not so much because actually the more levels that you put into it the better the enchantments are. And I'm not sure if I said this already, but I noticed that like plus 10 or 11, um, instead of 1.1, it became 1.2 on the first enchant. And at 20, it was a little bit more. And at 30 something, it was a little bit more. And at 40 something, it was a little bit more. And at 50 something, it, it seemed to be a little bit more. So when they talk about the scalability of, uh, of working one of these uh, sub specializations, 
it is absolutely there. Um, I guess maybe perhaps looking at like these cloth helmets again, we can kind of see those. I don't know if I have any bad ones on here. Um, maybe the plus tens might be a little worse. So looking at this one, well, plus three strength, that was the third enchantment. Um, 2.8 deck, so that was like the first one. And the second one was health, that doesn't help. We can see the third one was three. Um, that was at around the 50 levels. Um, when I started out, uh, the earlier stuff, I guess I don't have any earlier stuff to show you, but it was like 1.2, 1.3, and all this. And that was on the first enchantment. Remember that um, the first time you enchant something, it's going to be a lower value. So if you're if you're looking at health, depending, and again, that's going to depend on talking about enchantment, but also for master working, depending on the level of this, the strength of your first enchantment is based back to this. I'm at 52, so my first one's probably a, uh, a 1.3 or 1.2. Or 1.3, 1.4, somewhere in there at 50 something. I don't know. I can't remember right now. Um, but if you were just doing it, you're going to get a 1.1, your first one. And then your second one's going to be a little stronger, like maybe a 1.2. And then your third one's going to be a 1.3. Uh, but when you get to the 50s, one point, you might have a 1.3, 1.5. And then you saw that one had a 3. Um, so it was literally double, um, or triple rather, what the first enchantment was on the third enchantment. I know it's a lot of numbers throughout you, but they do get stronger the more times you enchant something and also the higher your level is. I was kind of seeing a 10 to 12 level uh, progression in there. I didn't document it exactly, but I did notice that uh, my initial first enchantment, its power was going up the higher I was raising this. I think that's going to cover the basics so far and things and some tips and tricks that I've discovered, uh, you know, just a few days into R38. Um, I'm sure I'll come up with some more things, but uh, basically disregard all the old videos. And I uh, also just want to make a quick mention. You can see we've got these Valentines on the floor and they're to different people. And I've posted this on the forums. I will be uh, doing call outs in Noble Zone. Uh, Owl's Head here in Diamond Fields and uh, Discord and stuff. And if people come to me, I will hand you one of these paper valentines. You will write on it and you'll give it back to me and we'll put it on the floor. And we're going to decorate this floor here um, and stuff for the upcoming next GM tutorial. Um, hope maybe by then I might have that enchantment armoring to GM. That would certainly be a goal for me. I doubt that I would have both, but I might have that one to be able to teach you guys. I can't promise that. But also we just want to kind of get all these happy little hearts going along on the floor. And then that way when you guys are out here doing the mentoring thing, you can go around and read all the different Valentines from different people, different guilds and stuff like that. Just kind of as a fun thing for our deco for this month. Um, that's going to conclude this tutorial. Um, I really didn't make anything or show you anything or show you the particular values. Because like I said, it's so very fluid depending on your level and so many other things. Um, I think what I've tried to present is good enough to give you an idea of how to get started. Some shortcuts to take that I didn't necessarily take the whole time. So uh, take care everybody. Happy hunting and be safe.